بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا That which I would like to remind my Muslim brothers and sisters of is a reminder pertaining to the affair of being patient with the qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal, the divine decree of Allah Azza wa Jal. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, وَالْقَدْرُ خَيْرِهِ وَشَرِّهِ As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned about the faith of the believer is that we believe in the divine decree, that which is good and that which is bad. And we know that Allah Azza wa Jal لَهُ الْحِكْمَةُ الْبَالِغَةُ as Allah Azza wa Jal informs us in the Quran, Allah Azza wa Jal has the greatest of wisdom. So that which Allah Azza wa Jal decrees, which takes place in this life, it is it has the greatest of wisdom, whether we know it or whether we do not know it. So the affair of patience and being content with the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal is a tremendous affair. And from that which I would like to mention is some of that which is mentioned by Imam Ibn Qayyim rahmatullahi in one of his great books called Uddat al-Sabirin, which is the provisions of the patient. And in that book, which is a tremendous book, and I advise my brothers and sisters, if it's available in English, to read the book. And if it's not, for those who can read Arabic, they should go back to the original book. It is a tremendous book that talks about the affair of patience and the virtues of patience. And Imam Ibn Qayyim, rahmatullahi mentions a narration from Imam Ahmed, Imam, the Imam of Ahl Sunnah, Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal, where he mentioned, ذَكَرَ اللَّهُ أَصَّبْرَ فِي فِي الْقُرْآنِ فِي تِسْعِينَ مَوْضِعًا Imam Ibn Qayyim, rahmatullahi mentions that Imam Ahmed said that Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned the affair of patience in the Quran in more than 90 places, in more than 90 places to inform us of the tremendous virtues and importance of that particular affair. And then Imam Ibn Qayyim rahmatullahi goes on to mention many of those places in the Quran to show and to remind the believers of the affair of patience. And from that he says for Allah Azza from that is that Allah Azza ordered the believers. Wasbir li hukmi rabbika fa innaka bi'ayunina. Allah Azza says, be patient with the decree or the ruling of your Lord. Be patient with the ruling of your Lord. Likewise, he mentions the different places in the Quran, from the different places in the Quran, is that Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah ma'as sabirin. Indeed, Allah Azza wa Jal is with those who are patient. And he mentioned one of the statements of the Salaf, Abu Ali, Abu Ali, that he mentioned that these individuals have obtained tremendous virtue in this life and the next, because they have obtained the ma'iyya of Allah. That Allah Azza wa Jal is with these individuals in this life and in the next life. So the, from the tremendous virtues of being patient is that when a person displays and exerts patience, the Allah Azza wa Jal is with that individual. Allah supports that individual. Allah assists that individual and Allah rewards that individual because Allah is pleased with that individual. So that is from the places that Imam Ibn Qayyim rahmatullahi mentioned. Uh, from the Quran as it relates to being patient. Likewise, he mentions another statement, uh, or he mentions another verse where Allah Taala says, "الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّ لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّ إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ أُولَئِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَلَوَاتٌ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ وَرَحْمَةٌ وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُحْتَدُونَ." Where Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surah Al-Baqarah uh, that Allah Azza wa Jal mentions three rewards for the people that exert patience. The people that say when they are afflicted with a calamity, verily from Allah we come and to Allah we return. They will have the prayers of Allah Azza wa Jal. And the Salaf mentioned the prayers of Allah, meaning that Allah will mention them with good amongst the Malaika. Allah will mention these individuals who display patience. Allah will mention them with good amongst the Malaika. So that's the first. أُولَئِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَلَوَاتٌ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ وَرَحْمَةٌ And they will have the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُحْتَدُونَ And they are guided. And they are guided. Then Imam Ibn Qayyim rahmatullahi mentions that some of the Salaf, and one of the Imams of the Salaf, he had a calamity. He had a calamity that 
took place in his life. And someone came to give his condolences. And that individual said to him, مَا لِي لَا أَصْبِرْ وَقَدْ وَعَدَنِي اللَّهُ بِثَلَاثَ خِيصَالٍ وَكُلُّ خَصْلَةٍ مِنْهَا خَيْرٌ مِنَ الدُّنْيُ وَمَا فِيهَا He said, why should I not be patient? Why should I not be patient? When Allah Azza wa Jal has promised me three rewards, each reward is better than the world and everything in the world. Each reward is better than this world and everything in this world. One, that Allah mentioned you to the malaika. Two, that you Allah will have mercy upon you. And three, that Allah will guide you. That Allah Azza wa Jal will guide you. So this is also from the places that Imam Ibn Qayyim rahmatullahi mentions in his book of the reward for being patient. And he mentions many other verses in the Quran as it relates to the affair of, of being patient. And also from that which can be mentioned is the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu and others, in Sahih Bukhari and others, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَا يُسِيبُ الْمُؤْمِنْ مَا يُسِيبُ الْمُسْلِمْ مِنْ نَصَبٍ وَلَا وَصَبٍ Where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that the believer will not be afflicted with illness or harm وَلَا أَذَنْ nor any harm وَلَا غَمٍ nor any sadness إِلَّا كَفَّرَ اللَّهُ بِهَا عَنْهُ خَطَايَاهُ أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم where the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم mentioned that a person is not afflicted with an illness or a disease or harm or sadness except that it will be a means that Allah عز وجل expiates his sins it will be a means of expiation for the individual sin. So and it's upon the believer to reflect. Yani, I'm in a situation which is out of my hands. It's out of my hands. A lockdown or a curfew or not being able to share and participate with the Muslims for the Eid. But if an individual is patient, because it's out of their hands, there's nothing they can do to change their affair. If the individual is patient, then they are getting rewarded. Allah Azza wa Jal is expiating that individual sins. And you have another hadith from the authority of Aisha radiallahu wa sallam, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that but the believer is not afflicted with a calamity illa rafa Allahu biha anhu khatayahu. She said, oh, illa rafa Allahu biha daraja wa hatta anhu khatayahu. If the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that a believer is not afflicted with a calamity except that Allah Azza wa Jal would raise him in levels, and Allah would erase his sins. Except that Allah Azawajal would raise that individual in levels, and Allah would expiate and remove his sins. So these are the type of things that the believers need to be reminded of as it relates to the affair of qada wal qadr, the divine decree of Allah Azawajal, especially for those matters that you could not have, there's nothing you could do to change that affair. So either you sit angry and upset and displeased with the affair when you actually have the ability and you don't have anything, you don't have the ability to change it. But if you are patient with the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal and, 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 and content with the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal, while you're in that matter that you cannot change, you are getting rewarded. Your sins are being removed. Your levels are being elevated. So why would the believer, why would the believer not. Why would the believer choose not to be patient with the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal? Another athar, another statement that Imam Ibn Qayyim rahmatullahi mentions in that, in that book, that book that we mentioned, Uddat al-Sabirin, he brings a statement from one of the Salaf, from Yunus bin Ubaid, one of the Imams of the Salaf, that someone came to him, Ja'a rajulun ila Yunus bin Ubaid, yashtaki diqa halihi. A man came to Yunus bin Ubaid, and he was complaining about his financial difficulties, his constraints. So Yunus bin Ubaid said, أَيَسُرُّكَ بِبَصَرِكَ هَذَا, بصرك هذا مِئَةْ أَلْفْ دِرْحَمْ He said, would you prefer? And Yunus bin Ubaid is responding to the man. He said, would you prefer to have for your eyesight 100,000 dirham? The man said, no. He said, فَبِيَدِكَ مِئَةْ أَلْفْ دِرْحَمْ would you prefer to give your hand away for 100,000 dirham? The man said, لا. He said, فَبِرِجْلَيْكَ مِئَةْ أَلْفْ دِرْحَمْ 
with your feet, would you like to have 100,000 dirham? He said, لا. فذكره نعم الله عليه. So Yunus bin Ubaid was reminding him, يعني your sight, your hands, your feet, your limbs, your intellect. Allah Az- Az- Azawajal has given you so much. So Allah Azawajal has prevented you from having financial ease. But look what Allah has given you in return. So Yunus bin Ubaid, so he reminded him of the blessings of Allah. And then he said, I see that Allah Azawajal has given you hundreds of thousands of blessings. And you're complaining about your financial constraints. You're complaining about your financial difficulties. But you're forgetting about the tremendous blessings, uh, the remaining blessings that Allah Azawajal has bestowed upon you. So this is that which I remind myself and I remind my brothers of the, of the importance of looking at that which Allah Azawajal has given you and blessed you with and allowing that to be a means of you being patient with that which is somewhat of difficulty in your life in addition to you being patient and that removing your sins and elevating your levels. Likewise, the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the hadith of Abu Huraira, which is reported in the Sahih of Imam Muslim, where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Unzuru ila man huwa asfala minkum, wa la tanzuru ila man huwa fawkakum, fa huwa ajdaru alla tazdaru ni'matallahi alaykum. Where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, look to those who are below you. Do not look to those who are above you, as it would be a means, and yani looking to those below you, would be a means of you being appreciative to that which Allah Azawajal has given you. So one of the ways you appreciate that which Allah Azawajal has given you, and one of the ways that helps you and assists you in establishing patience is that you look to those who are below you, those who are less fortunate than you. So to our brothers and sisters in different parts of the world who have been restricted because of COVID yani by their governments, for the purpose of their own safety. So they're being restricted to stay in their homes. So they were not able to participate pay, to participate with the Muslims on this day of Eid. Then think about those who are below you, my dear brothers. Think about our brothers and sisters in Palestine who have been harmed and injured and killed and continuously harmed, injured and killed and oppressed by the Jews just a few days ago. Think about our Muslim brothers in, in, in Palestine. Think about our Muslim brothers and sisters in, in China who are put in concentration camps and the men are killed and the women are raped and the likes. Think about our Muslim brothers in Burma who, you know, the, the ethnic cleansing and the likes of that. Our Muslim brothers and sisters in Syria. Our Muslim brothers and sisters in Yemen. Think about our Muslim brothers and sisters who are being harmed and killed and oppressed and jailed and beat in different parts of the world. Who eat? There was no such thing as praying eat Aslan. There was no such thing as praying eat because they're in a state of turmoil. They're in a state of fear. They're in a state of war. They don't have the secu- they don't have the safety and the security of even leaving their homes or even sitting in their homes without being threatened of bombs and grenades going on, going off around them. But at least our brothers and sisters that are in different parts of the world that are being restricted to their homes. At least those individuals are safe. At least those individuals, they can go out after a period of time in safety and comfort. And they have food. The hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, مَنْ أَصْبَحَ مِنْكُمْ آمِنًا فِي سَرْبِهِ مُعَاثًا فِي جَسَدِهِ عنده قوت بلد عنده قوت يومه فكأنما حيزت له الدنيا بحذافير بحذافيرها the hadith in جامع الترمذي where the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم mentioned the individual who wakes up the individual from amongst you from amongst the Muslim who wakes up and he's safe in his life his life is safe آمنا في سربه معافا في جسده he's healthy He's safe, his life is safe. Not grenades, not missiles, not police coming in and arresting him in the middle of the night. So he's safe in his, in his body. And he's safe in his health. مُعَافًا فِي جَسِدِهِ عِنْدَهُ قُوتُ يَوْمِهِ He has the provisions that he needs for that day. 
It is like he's been given all of the blessings of the dunya. And subhanAllah, the Prophet Sallallahu is reminding us, if you wake up and you're not worried about bombs, grenades, police coming to arrest you, take you away, never to be seen, concentration camps. Look at our brothers and sisters in, in Jordan, in Syria, in Iraq, that are in refugee camps. They haven't seen their land. They haven't seen their, their country. They haven't seen their family and friends for years because of the wars that are taking place in their countries. They're in refugee camps. And then there, disease, there are diseases in those refugee camps and there's stealing and there's rape in those refugee, refugee camps. Salat al Eid? There's no such thing. There's no such thing. Those individuals don't have the ability nor the comfort of waking up and being safe nor the ability, nor the comfort of waking up and being healthy. Diseases are being spread. They don't have enough medical supplies. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, and the provisions for the day. What about our brothers and sisters in different lands around the world who do not wake, wake up in the morning and do not know what they're going to eat for that day? Do not know what's going to come to them of food, of drink, of fresh water. So indeed, our brothers and sisters that are in different parts of the world that have been restricted to stay in their homes because of health restrictions, those individuals, as the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, should look to those who are below them. They should look to those who are below them. And they should remember the hadith of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the hadith of Suhaib bin Sinan, which is also reported in the Sahih of Imam Muslim. Where the Prophet ﷺ said, عَجَبًا لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنْ إِنَّ أَمْرَهُ لَهُ كُلُّهُ خَيْرٍ وَلَيْسَ ذَلِكَ إِلَّا لِلْمُؤْمِنْ إِنْ أَصَابَهُ صَرَّا شَكَرْ فَكَانَ خَيْرٌ لَهُ وَإِنْ أَصَابَهُ ضَرَّا صَبْرْ فَكَانَ خَيْرٌ لَهُ The hadith of the Prophet ﷺ where he said, the affair of the believer is tremendous and amazing and that is only for the believer. And that is only for the believer. When things of joy come to him, he's grateful. And that is good. To show his gratitude to Allah as Allah as Allah says in the Quran, وَلَا إِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَا أَزِيدَنَّكُمْ If you are grateful, I will increase you. So Allah blesses you, gives you joy, comfort, happiness. If you show gratitude, then Allah as will give you more. And when calamity or difficulty comes to him, he's patient. And that is also good for him. Why? Because he's still getting rewarded. You can't change it anyway. So be patient and get a reward. Two individuals. One is upset, angry, displeased. Not only he doesn't get a reward, but he gets a punishment being displeased with the pleasure of Allah. But the other individual, and neither of them can change it. The other individual is patient and grateful and knows that there is ease after calamity. There is ease after difficulty and he's getting a reward in that affair. So this is a brief reminder for myself and my brothers and sisters and the communities that have been afflicted. We ask Allah Azza wa to accept it from us. We ask Allah Azza wa to forgive us for our sins and our shortcomings and to increase us in Iman and to guide us to that which is better and pleasing to him. Allah knows best. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barakan al-Nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam tasleem al-Kathira.